Hi, hello, welcome and welcome back to another episode on Little Slaw YouTube channel. So today in this video, we are going to see about the first section or day one in analyzing the AWR report. So what are we going to see in day one is we are going to see the database and snapshot details, which is the very critical part. So that's why I have taken this in the very first day. So this is very critical part to know about the database details and the snapshot details. So here I have given you a sample part, a sample data for you to analyze your test data or for your test database. And here I have come up with some of the examples or you can take it as a sample reports or a sample data. So here I have come up with the database name the database ID, which instance we have used and the instance number, the release and the REC host. And then we have the snap ID, the snap time, the sessions and the cursors per session. So I will explain you everything in the coming slides. So before we move on to the video, this is me, Yavasan Shanmugam. I welcome you all to Little Slide YouTube channel. Please don't forget to subscribe to our channel in case if you have not subscribed, Please don't forget to like the video, share the video with your friends. So here, this is how you get the data in your Oracle AWR report when you extract it. So this is the very first section. So once you get it, please make sure you document it very well. So this is how it is or it can be documented so that anybody who sees this can really understand what is the database details and what are the database informations and how does it it get placed and what are all the details about the database information so that's the reason i'm showing you this so this is how you have to document it and next i'm showing you the snapshot information so make sure you infer the details so this is the raw data so this is the inference of the raw data which we have taken from the awr report so this is how you have to present your report and then I will take you to the analysis part. So the first thing is the analysis. So after we discuss or after you have created your database information, the snapshot details in the performance metrics, you have to start analyzing your reports. So now we will see the first instance or the first line of this analysis that is the database instance test is running version 10.2.0.1.0. And it's not configured as a real application cluster environment. So what does that mean? And how do I infer that, that this is not been configured as a real application cluster environment? So I'll tell you how to analyze this and how did I come up with this line? So firstly, we are telling the stakeholder or anyone who reads this report or it is for us to know that the database instance test is running version. So which version we are running? and which database instance are we running and it's not configured as a real application cluster environment because if you remember let me go back here so if you remember we have mentioned as REC no and the REC host is test GTG so in Oracle databases when a database is configured as REC environment the REC host field typically lists the names of multiple nodes that constitute the cluster but in this scenario or in this case so I can show you even in the reports in this case we have got just one it's our one host indicates that the database is not set up in a RAC configuration so if it were a RAC environment you would expect to see multiple host names listed but here it's just one so that means that we have got one host that has been configured for this database and then the next statement which is the So the second statement which will come as part of the analysis is the AWR report covers a time interval of 262 minutes. So I can show you here. So the time it starts or the total time or the AWR report covers a time interval of 2.62 minutes which starts at 16th March 6th and the time and which ends so here you can see the beginning of the snapshot time and here we can see the end snapshot time 
and then the elapsed time here. So this shows that what time does it start and what time does it end. And then the third point is the number of sessions at the beginning and the end of the snapshot is 81 and 80 respectively. So this again we have taken from the report we have inferred. So what does this line means or what does this mean? So the number of session and cursor per, uh, sorry uh, the number of uh, sorry the number of sessions at the beginning and the end of the snapshot is 81 and 80 respectively. So what does this mean? So the number of sessions at the beginning and the end is 81 and 80 which you can see here which refers to the count of active sessions in the Oracle database at two specific points in the time. So one is at the beginning and the other one is at the end of the snapshot. So at the start of the snapshot interval which is the snap ID 911 which began at 2230 there were 81 active sessions in the database. At the end of the snapshot interval, that is the snapshot ID 912. So snap ID is very important to know or to follow the snap snapshots. So which ended at 22, 30 to 3, 10. There were 80 active sessions in the database. So what does this information provide? So this information tells you that the dynamics of the database workload during the specified time frame. So a decrease in the number of sessions from the beginning to the end could indicate that some sessions completed their tasks and disconnected or that the workload has actually decreased. So on the other hand, an increase might suggest new sessions being created or an uptick in activity. So in summary, this line gives you or the line that's one that says the number of sessions gives you a snapshot of the active session count and helps in understanding the concurrency and the workload characteristic of the database during the analyzed time period. And then the next line which you can see here is the average number of cursors per session is 7.7 .7, which indicates that the average number of SQL cursors that were open or in use per active sessions in the Oracle database during the specified time interval. So what do, what do you mean by cursor? So if you are working in the database or in the performance for a long time, you might know about cursor, but let me give you an introduction about what uh, the cursor is. So in the context of the database, a cursor is a handle or a pointer to the result set of a SQL query, and it's a mechanism used by the database to manage and navigate the set of rows returned by a SQL statement. And that's why we are calculating the cursors per session because it is used by the database to manage and navigate the set of rows written by a SQL statement. And then we all know about the sessions because we are discussing about the cursor, per sessions and assertions. A session in a database represent a user or an application connection to the database. So each active connection is considered a session. So now you know how the cursor per session is 7.7 .7, which means the mechanism or the the mechanism that is used by the database to manage and navigate the set of rows returned by a SQL statement for each session, which is for each active connection. So the average number here tells us that how many SQL cursors are open or active for each connected user session, right? And then the final line of our analysis, which is the elapsed time. So the elapsed time for this interval is 2.62 minutes while the database the total database time is 74.32 minutes, which is highlighting two important time related metrics in the context of an Oracle database performance analysis. So the first part, which we all know what is elapsed time. So elapsed time is the actual time that has passed between the start and end of the snapshot interval. So in this case, the elapsed time for the specified interval is 2.62 minutes and the elapsed time represents the wall clock time or the real world time that has passed. On the other hand, the DB time, which we all know the database time, is the cumulative time spent by the database server processing user request, which includes both the CPU time and the time spent waiting for resources. So in this case, the total database time during the specified interval is 74.32 minutes. So the DB time is a measure of the overall workload or demand on the database server. So that's how we analyze so these are the analysis part. So 
the reason here is so we have got a time duration of 2.62 minutes so this discrepancy indicates that during the 2.62 minutes of real world time so the database was actively processing work which is the review time for a much longer cumulative duration and at what kind of scenarios does this happen so what are the reasons that this can happen is the first thing is the parallel processing so the database may be utilizing parallel processing which allows it to perform multiple tasks simultaneously and effectively utilizing cpu processes and the next thing is the concurrency and wait events so there may be periods during which sessions are waiting for the resources such as the input output or logs which contributes to the total database time without actively consuming the cpu and the final thing is the efficiency of or the efficient resource utilization so the database might be efficiently using resources during the elapsed time which results in a high db time relative to the wall clock time so that's how we have come up with the analysis so you have to analyze each and every line and you have to understand why or what does happen during the database execution and then now let's move on to the considerations so we have few considerations that have to be done so the first point is the db time being significantly larger than the elapsed time which suggests that the database is handling a considerable amount of workload or there might be contention so what happened here is so first we'll break the components so the first thing we all know the database time and then the elapsed time so when the db time is significantly larger than elapsed time it indicates that the database server has been actively engaged in processing tasks for a longer duration than the actual time that has passed and this situation can be interpreted in a few ways which we see already but let me again reiterate so it can be due to high workload or it can be due to resource contention or because of the efficient resource utilization so, so these are some of the practical terms if the db time is much larger than the elapsed time it warrants further investigation to understand the nature of the workload and to identify any potential performance bottlenecks or any contention points so this is the major thing that we have to identify and analyze so this is not just finding the report and showing them and just going up, going apart from that so it's to analyze each and every part of the numbers so the numbers are very important so we have to be very careful in understanding the numbers and the data the next thing which we see here is the number of sessions and cursor per session can help evaluate the concurrency and the workload characteristics so how can we do that so first we'll see the number of sessions here so what does this number of sessions mean so a session in a database represents a user's connection to the database and it includes the processes and the resources associated with that user's interaction with the database so what's the significance of this so the number of sessions provides insights into the level of concurrent activities within the database and a higher number of sessions may indicate a higher level of user interactions it can be transactions or it can be an application activity and next we can see the cursor per session which we see already which is in the context of database is a handle or pointer the result of a set of sql queries so the cursor per session ind indicates that on average how many sql cursors are open in user per active session so by seeing this we can understand that or we can see or we can identify the concurrency assessment so we have to do the concurrency assessment and we have to do the we have to understand the workload characteristics and also we have to so in summary we have to find that the number of sessions and the cursor per session are valuable indicators for understanding the concurrency and workload characteristics of an oracle database so these metrics the key metrics which is the cursor per session or the number of sessions in performance analysis can guide you to optimize the database for efficient and responsive operations because by analyzing the data you, you can or you have to tie these metrics for analysis like the concurrency assessment or how does the resource affects or how does the content and you have to uh, infer the workload characteristics and the cursor per session and finally you have to use these values to do the tuning so how can you do this so by monitoring these metrics over time will help you to 
identify the trends and identify any potential performance bottlenecks or areas for optimization. So for example, let me give you an example. So if the number of sessions suddenly spikes, it might warrant investigation into the cost and potential adjustment. So we have to check for any spikes or any low during the testing. And then the final part. So we have so far we saw about the analysis and the consideration. So finally, we will close with the recommendations. So what are the recommendations do you give to the DBA to fix these issues based on the database details and the snapshot details. So that's what you're going to see now. So the first recommendation is you have to do further investigation to understand the nature of the workload and identify any performance bottlenecks. And you have to consider examining the SQL statements, the weight events and other AWR sections for more in-depth analysis. And you have to check for any abnormal behaviors, as I told you, for any spikes or any high resource consumption or contention that might affect the performance. So this, with this, I think I come to an end. So in this video, we saw about the database and the snapshot details. I will take you to another interesting video in our next session with a different, but it will be a following, following part of this. So in case if you want to understand or if you have any queries, please do comment in the comment section. We'll discuss them in a detailed video. So until I meet you in another interesting video, it's bye bye from Asin Chanmugam and Little Slaw.